Yes, we have a caller on the phone who has some questions about a gross problem that happens to people from time to time. So, Jackie, what's your question for us today? My question is about gross-looking scabs. Well, um, you know, when they take a long time to heal, I sometimes get impatient and just pick them off myself. Are there any dangers or risks when I do this? I, yes. It's, it's tempting. <laughs> it's tempting, but Jackie, what, what's happening when you develop a scab is you're going through healing process. So when you cut yourself initially, what happens? Platelets come together to make things sticky so you don't bleed. They start forming a little clot, but then this thread-like material called fibrin comes in board, and it truly creates what we know as ultimately that scab, that fibrous tissue. But what's going on under the scab is why Dr. Orton's going to explain you don't want to do this, because under the scab, new skin cells are forming, and they're forming and they're bridging that gap underneath the scab. Meanwhile, inflammatory cells are there to help fight off infection. Eventually, underneath that scab, all new skin is formed. If you rip that scab off, you are ripping away that healing tissue prematurely. It may take two weeks for the scab yeah, to come it's, off. It's the exactly. deeper the cut, the bigger, the longer it's going to take. Exactly. I mean, we call a scab nature's band-aid. That's why you want to leave it alone in most cases. And we're learning more and more about what you explained about the platelets and the fibrin. We know that that matrix that forms not only acts as a glue, but it stimulates your body's response to heal. So if you remove it prematurely, it's going to take longer to heal, and you're more likely to scar. You know, the exception being if you had a scab that was really soupy underneath. Mm -hmm. In that case that like that, you may want to, if it's harboring bacteria underneath, it would be the only exception, but you'd probably want to show that to a doctor. Plus, if you're picking first. at a scab with those, your dirty fingers, it's just asking for infection. And Jackie, one thing we did not address that is so key is after you initially sustain the injury that is going to lead to a scab, you want to clean that area off with copious amounts of water because otherwise what you're doing is you're allowing essentially a scab to form around an area where there may be dirt, other contaminants. You want to get rid of those contaminants mm -hmm. for optimal healing mm -hmm. with that scab, lowering your risk of infection. And of course, if you see redness, uh, warm area around the scab, you develop fevers, Hus. that can be a sign that you've gotten infected. But don't pull those scabs, Jackie. Don't it's just it. not worth it. Yeah. Just say no. <laughs> and don't Thank you, doctors. Thanks for being on the show.